Hello guys, welcome back. In this video, I will be explaining as I mentioned in my previous video, chat with a PDF. But in this case, what I'm going to do is, is use the models which I mentioned in my last video, this nomic embed text to do the embeddings. And we can use any models from these Olama's, let's say, website. Example, I, I have different models here. Also, I will be testing with the, one of the model from the Grok uh, API. And they have two, two models right now. One is the Llama 270B4096. And the next one is Mixtrol 1827B. So I will be using Mixtrol also and show you how, how do we get the answer between these two models. Let's get started. Okay, as always, here is the code in the GitHub. So you can just go here and clone it. You can just go to the code here, SSH or HTTPS, just copy this, go to your terminal. I have already cloned this. As you can see here, I'm inside the cha React chat with PDF. And these are the contents of that file. What is the first thing that we need to do is create the virtual environment, right? You can just do Python 3 dash M V E N V source activate so meaning that it will create a virtual environment and activate the virtual environment and as you can see dot v e n v is shown in front meaning that our virtual environment is being created and next thing is we need to install the necessary packages so what is the packages if i go and say cat requirements dot txt you can see that we are going to install chain lead lang chain lang chain community pi pdf because we are going to use the pdfs Chroma DB to store the embeddings, Grok, because we are also going to test with the Grok model and Langchain Grok and the Olama to load those uh, models, right? What I will do here is pip install requirements.txt. So it is going to install all the necessary packages for us. Once this is done, uh, we can just create a simple uh, chain lead applications. And I will be showing how to quickly switch between different embedding models and different models and check the performance, let's say, based on that. I, as, as I have already shown you how fast is the Nomic embed model in my last video. I hope you, you will be watching that video also because why not use the best embedding model out there? instead of just using the random random models right as i said you before also we are going to use the nomic uh, embed uh, text and it has uh, as you can see here it is the large context length text encoder that surpasses the open ai's text embedding r002 and text embedding 3 is small we will we were actually using this kind of models so why to pay for that right so yeah now I will be going to the terminal. As you can see, all the things are being installed. So I will open this in the VS Code to explain you in depth. One thing first is if you want to have the Lang Smith also in your applications, you can just uh, go here. There is this example.env. Just copy this. I have already copied here in .env. I will show you because I'm going to delete the, let's say the Langchain API keys later. So yeah, this is the things for tracing into the language smith. And later I will show you also how to uh, how to add the Grok API here when we will be using that, right? Now I will go to the app.py file. What is here? There is import py pdf2 that is for pdf in loading the pdf, right? And then there is this olama embeddings because we are going to use the embeddings via this olama embedding class. As you can see by default it is llama 7b. But we are going to use the nomic embed in this case. And there is the recursive text splitter. What was this is splitting the text by recursively look at character. So as the name already suggests here, the doc strings. And now we are going to use Chroma to let's say store all our embeddings and the necessary things. And we have the conversational retrieval chain. So what is DOS? A chain for having a conversation based on the retrieved documents. And there is this chat Olama where we will be using the Olama model. Olama locally runs large language models, right? By default, it is Llama 2. We will be using Mistral instructor. We can even use Llama 2 in this case, just to test. And then I will show you also how to use from the chat Grok, the model from Grok, and we need to pass this API key. So we will do that later. And also there is this chat message history and um, conversational buffer memory so that it knows your history. So you don't need to provide all the context each time. That's the, that's the thing that this history and conversational buffer memory does. 
as if you if you just hover on top of this it will show what it does okay buffer for storing conversational memory and if you just go here it will show okay in memory implementation of chat message history right and the chain lead is there to have the simple uh, chat ui by the way we don't even need to load the environment variables in chain lead because it does by default so if you are using other than chain lead you need to let's say uncomment these lines what i'm doing here is i will show you two things as i said you before also here llm local meaning that chat llama chat olama and by default it is using llama 2 as it is shown here but we can even pass the mistral instruct we will test with this one and then this is the grok so for that we need to have this model mixtral 8 into 7 bi as i showed you before also for that we need to have the api key right let me actually go and already grab the api key so it's easier if i go here we need to provide this api key right i will copy this first go to dot env down here i will paste this and i will go to the website now it is the playground here there is this api key i will create new one submit okay name must be there okay grow rag summit again i'm showing you this because i'm going to delete uh, soon this one so i go here and paste it that is done let me go back to the app so yeah this part is done and now there is this on chat start what we are telling here is what to do for the chain lit application when we start the applications right here we say the initialize the variable to store the uploaded files when files equals to none we we upload the file please upload a file and you can pass this accept pdf so it knows that we are uploading the pdf and you can play around with this max size how much of the big file you want to do and what is the timeout for this right and we just send this and we get the first uploaded file here and we just print the message okay processing and here as you can see the by pdf2 we are reading the pdf files extract the text from it and then split the text into chunks right this is how we do things and the chunk size is 1000 and you can pass the chunk overlap whatever you want to pass it here and then we just use the splitters and split the text the pdf text that we get from here and we create a metadata uh, out of that and we create a chroma uh, vector store here is the main thing we are using the nomic embed text and i will also show you with this llama too first i will actually we, you can just play around with this but uh, as i showed you in my previous video it's quite fast right let's not even go with this llama too and then we are just taking the text embeddings and metadatas and then we are creating the doc source that's it so then we have this chat history initialize the history for the conversation and the memory for the conversational context so here you can see the memory chat history output answer this is the normal normal things that goes into the conversational buffer memory and here we will create the conversational retrieval chain from llm we are passing the llm here local first we can change these to llm grok when we use that grok right type is stop you can just play around with this also and the retrieval okay doc source dot adds retriever so it retrieves the information from this doc source that we created and memory equals to memory so this is what we created here and the return source document we say it to true right after that we just say that okay processing done you can ask the questions and we just use that uh, user session dot set chain we just have this chain set here so that is the initial part of the chain lead application here as you can see here it just we just get the get the chain that we set before and then we just have this async lang chain callback handler and then here we are just passing the message callbacks and we are getting the answer and we are also getting the source documents this is the text initialized list to store the text and we process source documents if available right so yeah this is just the code here so what we will be doing first is now we will be running this uh, chain lit application so first remember that we are using this mistral instruct and we are using the model embedding is a nomic embed uh, text right i can just go here in the terminal and i will just say chain lead run app dot pi right so it is loading the dot env files and it will run the simple chain lead applications okay this is here it says the upload the files i can upload this gpt for all paper as you can see here it is taking 
just a fraction of seconds to do all the embeddings. Now we can just go ahead and ask the questions. I have already asked the questions as you can see here. Many I will just say when was GPT-4 released. So it will go and provide the answer for us. So let's see if it provides the answer for us or not. Because I'm using the Mistral instruct in this case. And there was the part. Okay, it says that okay the text does not provide any information on when GPT-4 was released. But it was there and it gets that it is getting into the GPT for all. Okay, let me open the PDF for you so that you know what question I am asking, right? GPT for all paper. So this is the paper as you can see here. I am just asking the question uh, from the part here. Okay, when was the GPT for release? It should be March 14, 2023, right? You can just go ahead and ask the questions. Let me go and ask the questions here. I have already asked some questions. So I can say, okay, where was the collected data? loaded on it should give me it was loaded into the atlas because they they just load that into the atlas but let's see if it works or not by the way we are using the mistral instruct in this case so it said the context does not provide any information so so that means that we have the information from the embeddings but then the mistral instruct is not able to process this information right i will just close this one so let me just uh, remove this mistral and just try with the llama too, how, how it performs, right? We don't, we don't need to provide any of this here. I will do save and now I will go to the terminal again and here I will again run chain lead run app.py, right? Let me see if this provides the answer. Okay, your app is running. So what I will do is browse here, go to GPT for all. It is loaded because we have the fast embedding model. I will just go here and ask the same question. Okay, when was GPT-4 released? Let's see if it provides the answer or not. We are using the Olama and we are using the default Llama 2 uh, model in this case, right? So as you can see, it is taking uh, some time to uh, provide the answer. And okay, according to GPT-4, GP, according to the text, GPT-4 was released in 2023. Specifically, it was released March 20, 2023. So yeah. Is it March 20, 2023? Let me open the PDF again. So it says, okay, it's March 14, 2023, but we did that. So, ah, okay, it gets the information from here, <laughs> March 2023. So, okay, March 26, yeah, it just went to the other other part, but it gets the somehow answer, but it's not correct, right? Let me see if it answer where was the collected data loaded in. So it should be the at last where it is uh, loaded. So let's see if it provides the answer or not. Okay, yeah, it gets the answer. As you can see here, according to the text, the collected data set was loaded into the Atlas. So yeah, it gets the answer. So meaning that how you choose the models also defaults, right? Now, what we can do is let me cancel this. And let me go to the uh, code first. And from here, what we can do is instead of a local model, we will be using the LLM Grok, right? So for that, what we can do is we can go down in the model part here and we can change this to uh, Grok. I will save this one. I will go to the terminal and here I will try to stop this. For some reason, my terminal is not responding. So I will open a new one. I will activate the virtual environment and now I will run chainlit app.py. So now it will make the API call to the Grox website, right? So this is the thing. I will just browse here. I will use the GPT same paper. And now, okay, it said fails to load on the find. What is the issue? Let me go to the terminal. Uh, attempting to open already in use. Okay, it says already in use because we are using this here. Control C, for some reason it is not opening. I will cancel this and again uh, run this one. So yeah, now it should be running. Let me browse here. GPT for all. Yeah, it is processing. It's done. And now if I ask the question, okay, when was GPT-4 released? It should be quite fast as you can see here because we are using now the Grox model, but it cannot find that. I cannot provide you the exact date for the release GPT-4. It was not mentioned in the provided context, but it is mentioned there, right? And what did the information? Okay, source zero is there. Uh, and then what happened here? So there is also not there in the source 
two, it's not there. Source three, okay, it, it is not in the source, so it is not providing the answer. But let me ask another question. Let me the the same question. When was uh, where was the collected data is stored or located on? Right. So it's okay. As you can see here, how fast the inference is, and it is loaded in the atlas. It gets the uh, it gets the answer, and you can just go here and ask as many questions as you want. Uh, let's say on which model was original GPT for all model fine tuned. Uh, let's ask this one. So it should be Llama two, but it is saying okay, the original GPT for model was fine tuned on GPT. Turbo model from OpenAI. This model was used to generate responses. Yeah, it was responses. But if you go to the PDF, it's actually fine tuned. The original one, uh, it was fine tuned uh, with the Llama 7B. But it is going to the OpenAI because the OpenAI and Llama 2 are being quite mixed up here. So it is getting the answers. But the idea here is, you know how fast it is when using the Grox inference and using the model from the Grox. So until now, it's free, so I'm showing you this. Otherwise, you can just use the OpenAI's models. As you can see here, our embedding model is top-notch, so we are using the best open-source embedding models out there. And also, there are different models in the Olama's website. You can just go there and play around. By the way, when we are asking this using the Grox uh, API, if you go to the terminal, it is making the API call uh, to the api.grox, so you know that where uh, the API call was uh, was being made. So yeah, thank you for watching this. I hope now you get the idea how to use the uh, let's say that uh, open open source embedding model and also the open source models and also switch uh, between the two different models with just one line of code here, right? We just changed uh, the uh, we because we have the embedding model is the same, right? But what we did was uh, the model where it is uh, this one, right? So we just change into the LLM Grok and it is making into different API calls. And by the way, I explained you in my last video also and why it is important is because why it is important is also because as you can see in this diagram, so let me show you here. So this part of the diagram uh, is all about the embeddings as you can see here. First, there is a PDF. It is split into the chunks. And we have the chunks, there is the embedding API, we use the nomic, and then there is the embeddings, different embeddings, there is the build semantic index, that is the knowledge base. And again, when we ask the question also, there is the question that is passed into the same embedding API that is being embedded, and the semantic sorts happens in the knowledge base, we get the top ranked in our case four, and that is passed into the LLM. So the LLM just comes on the last phase of it so it synthesizes the answer and we get the answer right so by the by using these open source models as i showed you here also you can quickly switch between different different models and use different embedding models so yeah i hope you learned something new and just give a try it's not only with a pdf you can just go to the official documentation and load csv load text file load, you can load the readme files whatever you want to do so yeah, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.